Hey everyone, how's it going? So I'm sure you've noticed that I've been MIA for the last week. And uh, basically I had left, I had gone up to New York, I made a short on it. Went up to New York, I went to go visit my daughter, my son, and my mom. And I went to go do the radio show, Motormouth Radio, on Sunday. So there I met Ray Gorino, and uh, Chris was supposed to be there, he wasn't there for, uh, for this show. And then I met, uh, through um, a video conference, I met uh, Mac Man Brian. So it was really cool, it was a really interesting experience. Never did anything like that before. So that, I was, it was pretty cool. Um, very happy I got to do that. They have another show called Playing in Traffic. It's a podcast that they asked me to be part of, so I'm gonna be doing that also. Um, so anyway, I just had a lot going on during the week, and of course I wasn't doing any wrenching at all, and I helped a friend of mine who moved down to the area, believe it or not, he was moving this way anyway, so him and I kind of paired up, I helped him load a U-Haul in that, and him and I, we drove down here. Uh, his name is Carlos, and some of you that are into video games, you may know him, it's Cruz Corp, and I'll put a link to his YouTube page, YouTube channel rather, um, on this video, it'll be down in the description. So anyway, you guys remember the Colorado that I did the brakes on for for my friend there, my, my new friend, and um, I let him borrow the van. Now I knew, I didn't think he was gonna have the van as long as he did, but that was my fault, and I knew the van was gonna be needing brakes. I knew that was coming up soon. Now, if you've followed me from the beginning, you know that I've said before, this van eats front brakes. I don't know why. I've done calipers. I've done hoses. I've done the best brake pads and rotors you can buy. I've purchased the cheapest brake pads and rotors you could buy. I've bought the vented slotted rotors. It, it doesn't matter. They constantly wear his brakes out 12 to 15,000 miles in the front. <coughs> And it's weird, though, because it doesn't... I mean, it gets a buildup of brake dust, but it doesn't really affect... You don't get a brake pulsation, nothing like that. So it's kind of like I've gotten used to living with it being like that. Every twelve to 15,000 miles, i got to do brakes on it. So anyway, I let my new friend Mark use my van while I was fixing his truck. So I finished his truck, and I called him, and I said, Hey, you know, you're all done. You know, if you want to bring the van back and then we could switch vehicles. He's like, okay, not a problem. While I was away, he calls me. And he says, um, sounds like the brakes are grinding on the van. He goes, I'm heading actually to your house now. I was like, really? He goes, when did that start? He goes, it just started this morning on my way to work. He goes, I kind of had no choice, but he goes, I, I'm pretty sure they're grinding. So I'm like, okay, it's what it is. I I know the van does that, so I'm not, it, it, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't upset me or anything like that. And I knew the pads were getting a little on the thin side. I didn't think they were that thin, but I guess they were. I'm not quite sure how many miles he put on the van. But, uh, I mean, the van now has almost 240,000 miles on it. So, anyway, we got back to New York last night at 4 in the morning. I helped my buddy Carlos unload the U-Haul today. I basically spent my day unloading stuff from my garage and then unloading his stuff um, into his new place that he's going to be living at, which is about 25 minutes from me, but regardless. So I went and picked up pads and rotors because I knew what this van was going to need. But I figured, let me just show you what it's doing real quick before I start doing the job. So here we are. There you see. Now this is an 08 Dodge Grand Caravan. Like I said, since day one, this thing goes through 12 to 15,000 miles is about all I ever get on front pads. I don't know if it, it's probably because I'm rough on it. And yes, I'm the type of person that reuses the brakes. Like I, I drive fast and I think you know that. So whenever I'm coming up to a stop, it's like I'm always leaning on the brakes. It's just how I drive. It's how I've always driven. But this car is the worst car I've ever had for wearing out brakes. But like I said, it doesn't wind up with a brake pulsation or anything like that. It usually just wipes out the pads over a period of time, you know, and it blues the rotors over a period of time but not to the point where you wind up with a brake pulsation. So it's just kind of weird. And like I said, I've done calipers, I've done hoses, I've done the brackets, everything. I've tried everything um, that I think would cause this. And the master is not gonna be the issue behind this because the master, when it pumps into the ABS control unit, it disperses the fluid 
left front right rear right front left rear per channel of the master cylinder so it doesn't matter it doesn't go like the you know the rear or the front or whatever the master to just the front it splits it caddy corner or crisscross however you want to put it so anyway let me just show you what i got here so here we are just going to go forward assuming you can hear that I'm just gonna leave it right outside here and we're gonna do, do the brakes right here so now at least you guys get to see me doing brakes and stuff using a jack and jack stands everything I do, do everything I do normally is on the on the lift or whatever you know inside a shop I'm doing this in my driveway so I just basically want to show you that you guys can do this too you guys can do this at home all right let's go out let's jack this thing up let's get it set up all right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one side at a time. Only reason being is to jack one of these things up, yeah, it's got a cross member of that, but it's kind of off to one side, so I have a tendency to lean it, you know, like this a little bit if you jack it up in the front. I'm just going to do one side at a time. It's just as easy. So whenever you're doing something like this on the outside, and I'm not using any power tools, I'm using all hand tools, break the, tire, break the lug nuts free before you take it up off the ground. Like that. And if you look, you see the rotor's shot. And actually, it's not it, it's not that deep. So they did just start making metal-to-metal -metal contact. So I'm going to break all of those free, then we're going to jack it up. And from there, then we'll take the wheel off. I'm going to put a jack stand under it, stuff like that. And then let's see what's involved in doing these brakes. So now with the wheel off, I'm going to get a good view and see what's going on here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this screwdriver here. Okay, and this is kind of interesting. Look at this screwdriver. Ikea. I actually bought a set of screwdrivers in Ikea in Sweden. I'm actually Swedish. I bought these things in Sweden in about 1988, I think it was. These were fantastic screwdrivers. I had broken the Phillips after a number of years, but man, I tell you what, they had got they got such good grip on things. It was incredible. Um, but anyway, I still have a couple of flatheads left, but yeah, I just thought it was kind of interesting and, and they fit great in your hand. Like you get a great grip on these things. That's probably why I broke the Phillips because you got such a firm grip and, uh, they're like a soft, not soft, soft, but they're not like a hard, they're almost like a steering wheel soft, you know, like a newer style steering wheel with like, you know, fake leather. Uh, it's almost what it feels like, but I tell you what, they're a great screwdriver. I can't, I can't knock these things. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. I just thought it was kind of interesting. I, I bet you've probably never seen an Ikea screwdriver before. I got it. Um, okay, so let me show you something. All right, so what I want to do is I want to pry back on the caliper. I want to see if everything moves. Basically, I just take the screwdriver and I poke it through here. See it? And you can see these rotors, you can tell they still got the paint on them. They're not super, super old. Now, you shouldn't use a screwdriver as a pry bar. So basically... Do as I say, not as I do. And doing this, what I'm doing is I'm compressing the piston in. So there, you see, I'm getting a gap on it, and everything moves. Everything moves. That's what I don't understand. Why this thing goes through front brakes so quickly? But you know, it's like I said, I kind of gotten used to it. So I know everything moves. I'm going to put a C clamp on that once I get it completely off. So I can compress it all the way. Now, in some vehicles, the actual piston in there is like a phenolic resin material. So you don't want to pry on that. I'm sorry, this right here, not this, this is the pad. This right here. This material is like a phenolic resin or something. Plastic, whatever you want to call it. You can actually crack them. So don't ever pry directly on them. Have something in between, you know, like a brake pad or whatever. So now. All I'm going to do is I'm going to break free the bolts, like such. I might have to, I'm doing this left-handed, which is like near impossible for me. But everything should move freely. It always has. I've never had an issue. But I'm going to get this apart. And like I said, I'm going to use a C-clamp to compress the caliper. Uh, so let me start getting that off. But as you can see, too, I mean, the rotor's already loose, ready to come off. So let me do that. 
Okay, with the caliper out of the way, as you can see, it does have a rust buildup on it. It's been a while since I changed these. I probably changed these about four years ago when I was up in New York. So, but like I said, the problem was there before I changed the calipers. It was there after I changed the caliper. So, uh, excuse me, I just had a sneezing fit. So, if I got the sniffles, so be it. So basically, I just take the caliper, I hang it off to the side here. I don't want it to fall down. I'm not putting a stress on the hose itself, per se. I'm going to take the pads out. The clips might fall out. So, but yeah, I mean, it was to be expected. I knew they were getting low, and it always wears the front ones out, or the outer pad first. Why? Don't know. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> Wish I knew the reason, but I'm not going to go that nutty into figuring it out. So, pulling the pads out, now what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to take the caliper bracket off, which these are two uh, 21 millimeters or 13 sixteenths. <clears throat> so, just got a socket on there. So let me get those off of there, and then we can get the rotor off. So there we go. I broke them free, and now I'm just using a ratchet to uh, get them out. So like I said, all I'm doing is getting these retaining bolts out. The actual caliper bracket itself. It's funny, I was discussing this with Ray uh, Guarino there at uh, Motormouth, talking about trying to do stuff one-handed and film at the same time, <laughs> how difficult it can be. It's just kind of funny that uh, it just kind of comes naturally at some point. So, all right, with this off now, now I can take the rotor off. And then I got to clean this up with a wire brush or something. And um, I got to see, I don't know if the new pads come with clips. I'm going to check and see. And then easy enough on this design, rotor just slides off. Not a big deal. So, make sure, before you put a new rotor on, make sure you clean this hub off. By clean off, I mean just make sure you don't have like a buildup of rust or any dirt or debris. <clears throat> that gets caught in between because if it does if it gets wedged in between the rotor and the hub here you can actually wind up with knocking noises when you hit the brakes so you don't want that so a lot of times i'll just use either compressed air or a rag or a little you know, like a old paintbrush or whatever just to clean off just to make sure there's no junk stuck on there okay so with the hub cleaned down and the new rotor in place the new rotor Always take brake clean on a rag or something and wipe down the surface. Yeah, you got a little smudge there. From, that's from my hand. It's not a big deal. <clears throat> it's not going to really affect anything. But you want to get off the shipping oil that comes on there. Now, if you guys remember, I've told you in the past, I usually take like a big nut or something and put over the stud. And then this way you can put a lug nut on to like basically center this and lock this in place. What if you don't have a big nut? What do you do? Simple. Let me show you. Because I don't have a big nut. I can't find one. Um... I'm still unpacking from the move, so where I have stuff, who knows? But let me show you what I do. Real super simple. Open end wrench, or box end wrench rather. It's a box and an open. Just do that. Now the reason you want to take up the space is because if you look at the stud, you see how down at the bottom there, the lug nut itself never went down there. If you try to thread the lug nut itself all the way down, a lot of times, it gets difficult because usually you get like a rust buildup or something like that there. And also, the stud may be longer than the nut is, especially if you have a, a, um, a closed-end nut like this. So basically, I just do this. Center it, make sure it's good. Then this way, the rotor itself doesn't flop around while you're installing everything else. Let me go clean the bracket off and let's get the bracket back in place. So now here is the bracket itself. What I'm going to do is just take a little wire or brush and I'm going to clean down in here where the, where the slides are, or not the slides, where the, pa uh, the pad actually slides. These shims did not come with the new pads. I bought the cheap pads. I did that on purpose because, like I said, I don't get any benefit out of using an expensive pad. They don't last any longer on this van. <clears throat> so all I'm going to do is clean these up, and then we're going to bolt this up. All right, so there you see. I mean, I got it cleaned up pretty good. Also, when you have this off, make sure that the pins actually move like they're supposed to. They slide easy, and they do, so that's not an issue. Now, what I'm going to do is I buy this brake caliper grease. If you buy the more expensive pads, it usually comes with a little bit of grease, like a little packet that you could use. But this is what I use. I keep this handy. I've had this thing for 
man alive it's probably going on 20 years now i think there's a leaf in there yeah or a moth that's all right it has lubricating qualities but i'm going to take this with a little dab and i'm going to put it inside on the shim so let me go ahead and let me get these get this grease in place and i'll show you what i'm talking about okay now that's actually just a very light layer and it's basically just like a little smear on there it's not all globbed in place you can actually see the metal through it you know through the uh, streaks so now we're going to take this we're going to bolt this in place try not to get any of this lube stuff on the actual rotor face and if you do just wipe it off let's get this in place and then we're going to compress that caliper okay so now with the caliper bracket in place or bridge some people call it a bridge i usually call it a bridge but it's a caliper bracket you tighten it up i'm not torquing it or anything i'm just using a breaker bar and you know i got it pretty tight i'm happy with that that's good you don't have to go bananas and then this actually shows really the good reason to do this with the nut because now the rotor is centered so it's not contacting the bracket or anything here you can see where i actually touched it because it actually rubbed some of the rust off so now let's compress that caliper and let's get the pads in place so here we go. We got an old pad in here. We have a C-clamp in here. And now I'm just going to start turning the C-clamp. And I mean, here, you see the amount of tension I'm putting on this. It's not an awful lot. And the piston's going back fine. The piston goes back smoothly. There's nothing holding it up. Now this was the inside pad. And you see there's more material on the inside pad. Normally, when an outside pad starts grinding, like how it did on this, normally what that's from is the pad hanging up in the caliper bracket or bridge or the pins being seized on the caliper uh, bracket itself. Basically, so like it'll allow the outside to like push out or push in and hold pressure on the outer pad and it never releases it. Whereas the piston releases its pressure, so the inner pad is not you know hanging up. I have none of that. So exactly what goes on in here, I have no idea. I just, like I said, I just got used to it. So let's get the pads on here and let's finish this up. So now here we have an inner and outer, outer pad. I've told you before, on the inner pad, usually when you have like a brake squeal indicator like this, you want to put it to the direction that the rotor is going to basically contact first. In other words, like this, you're going to install this so this is going to be up top because with the wheels rolling forward the top technically if you consider it it contacts the pad first so that's usually how you want to do it now the problem is with this design see how nice it fit with this design for some reason dodge made it so the indicator the squealer is in the same spot on both pads so now when i install the pad on the other side it's going to be at the bottom so when you have a situation like that what are you going to do that's just how it was designed so so be it um so now like i said this pad should go in tightly and it usually doesn't let's find out my neighbor's dog is going bananas again for whatever reason sometimes i have a little problem getting everything lined up because i'm trying to do this one-handed there it goes now see that that's in but there's no issue so what exactly is going on? I don't know. Like I said, I just got used to it. So, all right. And I probably said I got used to it, you know, a dozen times now. And I'm sure somebody else mentioned that. So there you go. I got used to it. Uh, yeah. So let's bolt the caliper itself up and let's get done with this. Leave the lug nut and everything else on until you're ready to put the wheel on. Um, or at least until you have the caliper itself bolted in place. Because if you take the nut off and all of a sudden the, or the rotor itself starts moving, a lot of times what happens is it might kick the pad out from you. So if it kicks the pad out, then you've got a problem. You know, you got to mess with it, try to get everything back together. Okay, so now with that all in place, I actually need that wrench to tighten those nuts up. So I'm going to back off on this now. But like I said, I need that wrench to actually tighten up those two, nut, uh, two bolts. There we go. And that's tight enough. Like, it, you know, it's kind of hard for me to show you how tight is tight. You know, but you can just imagine, look at the wrench. 
you know, putting some weight into it. But it's not like, you know, I can go Gorilla Tight and go even tighter if I wanted to. There's no need to. All right, so this side's done. I'm going to do the other side now. I'm not going to film the whole thing, but if I'm doing it and I come across something that I want to show you or that I think is important, then I'll show it to you, like in case I find something oddball. You never know. Now, just because you're grinding on one side, let's say you have brakes that are completely wiped out on one side and the other side's fine. Well, don't, just, don't necessarily suspect the side that's wiped out as being the problem. That side might be working fine. The other side not, might not be working at all. Makes sense, right? Think about it. Got one side worn out. The other side looks pretty darn good. Could it be that the other side's just not doing its job? It's only doing 10% of the braking while the other side's doing 90%. That's why the 90% side's already wiped out. You may wind up changing a caliper and a hose for absolutely no reason. Something to think about. All right, let me get that done. All right, so on the driver's side, I didn't really notice anything. Everything moved freely and everything else. But if you look at the pads, same thing. The inner pad has more material than the outer pad. I mean, the outer pad has a little bit more material than the other side, but not by much. I mean, it's it's pretty well wiped out. And that's exactly how this thing has always worn the brakes. So, all right. Let me get the wheels back on, and then we're going to take it for a quick little road test. Hey, guys. Sorry it's dark now. So, uh, But anyway, so brakes are all done. I'm back in the van, obviously. What's the first thing you do when you do brakes? The very first thing you do before you start it or anything. Pump the brakes. Pump them up. I've seen too many accidents over the years where guys will, or anybody, will forget to pump up the brakes. And then they stick the car in gear and go to leave and realize they got no brakes because the fluid's got to get pushed out. So here, let me show you. So basically just. Just like that. So it's all pumped up. So now we're going to take it for a quick ride. See how everything feels. It should feel pretty normal to me. Uh, like I said, I'm not upset about this because I anticipated this. You know, I didn't anticipate coming home to it, but, you know, it happens. And I, But I knew I was coming up on the knee brakes. Anyway, all right, let me take this thing for a quick ride, and then we're going to finish the video up. All right, so I just went for a road test, and everything feels fine. It's, it's, it's the strangest thing with this van. But what are you going to do? It is what it is. Uh, but, yeah, so, um, all right, well, hopefully you got something out of it. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.